problem is the problem that we have to do today is that we have to find the value of tau the maximum shear stress which is created in the beam when the beam is being subject to a load distribution as given in the figure okay we know tau is equal to vq divided by it okay and in order to solve this problem we have to first of all find the value of v v is shear force now in order to find the value of the shear force what we need to do we need to draw the shear force diagram we have to draw the shear force diagram for this beam so first and foremost process the first step for us will be drawing the shear force diagram sfd in order to draw the shear force diagram we know that we have to find first of all the reactions at end a sorry we have to find the reaction at end a the reaction at end a must be known to us the reaction at end b must be known to us okay we should find the reactions then we will be drawing the shear force diagram i will not be repeating the steps of drawing the shear force diagram in this problem because we have already discussed how to draw the shear force diagram drawing the shear force diagram for this type of a beam i am leaving as an exercise to the students uh, draw the shear force diagram first of all now as we went on to draw the shear force diagram the shear force diagram for this beam is essentially given here okay so please this the step that students have to do themselves is the students have to draw the shear force diagram themselves and verify that the shape of the shear force diagram will be like this okay so look at the shear force diagram look at the shear force diagram that we have as far as this this shear force diagram is concerned in this shear force diagram we have to be we have to make some we have to make some uh, we have to, we need to understand the shear force diagram first now as far as this shear force diagram is concerned i am repeating that drawing the shear force diagram is being left as an exercise to the students students should draw the shear force diagram themselves and verify that this is the shape of the shear force diagram okay now look at the shear force diagram at end a of the beam the value of shear force is 6.5 kN if you go to a distance uh, up to 4 meter the value of the shear force continuously remains 6.5 kN then at end b the shear force value is 19.5 kN okay so it means that if you look at the shear force diagram the value of the maximum shear force the maximum shear force in this case is equal to 19.5 the maximum shear force in this case is equal 19.5 kN so first and foremost step is the students must be able to draw the shear force diagram once you draw the shear force diagram you have to verify that the shear force diagram that you obtain is same as is given here in the book okay now from the shear force diagram it's clear to us that the maximum shear force that the beam is being subjected to is 19. <coughs> 19 sorry 19.5 kN this is the maximum shear force that this beam is being subject to write down v max is equal to 19.5 now once we obtain the maximum shear force to which this beam is being subjected to we'll do the step number 2 so in our formula the formula that we have we have tau is equal vq divided by i into t so we have obtain the value of v with the help of shear force diagram from the shear force diagram we could obtain the value of v now we will be obtaining the value of i then we will obtain the value of q t we, we know it's equal to 30 now in order to find the value of i first and foremost we have to find the moment of inertia in this formula is the moment of second moment of inertia of the beam about the neutral axis the first and foremost step will be locating the neutral axis as was the case in the previous problem <coughs> sorry in order to find the neutral axis uh, we have been we, we know the fundamental theorem that the neutral axis is the axis which is uh, which which is one of the axis of symmetry okay now look at this i section beam if you look at this i section beam if we if we draw a section like this sorry if we draw a section like this i section beam if we draw a section like this if we draw a section like this then this section then this section is an a uh, section of symmetry okay it divides this beam into two equal to symmetrical parts okay now uh, what we have to do <coughs> as far as 
the neutral axis is concerned, neutral axis passes through the centroid. So if we can obtain the centroid of this I beam, definitely that will be the neutral axis. Now, as far as <coughs> the uh, centroid form is concerned, you know that this I is composed of two pieces. You have piece one, you have piece two, okay? <coughs> Sorry. Now, as far as this rectangle and this rectangle is concerned, we know the area of this rectangle. We know the area of this rectangle. Let's select this to be our y axis, this to be our coordinate axis. Let's call this to be our coordinate axis. And we'll measure all the distances upwards. Yeah, that will be the distance we will be measuring, will be the y distance. Okay. So, first of all, this is a composite area problem. What is the area of this, this rectangle? The area of this rectangle will be 150 mm multiplied by 30 mm. That is 150 mm multiplied by 30 mm. Convert mm into meters. 150 mm is 0 0.150 meter and 30 mm is equal to 0 0.030 meter. So this is area of this rectangle, okay? Now we know where is the centroid of this rectangle? The centroid of this rectangle is at its geometrical center. That is, if this distance is 150 meter, that the distance of the centroid will be 150 divided by two, that is 75 mm. That is equal to 0 0.075, okay? So this 0 0.075 is the centroidal distance of is the centroidal distance of this rectangle one from this axis multiplied by the area okay so this is we are we are writing a1 y1 formula okay we have obtained the area of the first rectangle multiplied by the multiplied by the y coordinate of the multiplied by the y coordinate of the centroid of this rectangle okay now go to the second rectangle two its area is 150 mm multiplied with 30 mm that is 150 mm 0 0.150 mm meter multiplied by 30 mm that is 0 0.30 uh, meter multiplied by the multiplied by the y coordinate okay y coordinate of its centroid now in order to find the y coordinate of its centroid we are measuring the distances from this point we have treated this to be our axis so this will be 150 the centroid of this top rectangle will also be at its geometrical center okay it will be at the center so the distance of that center from this surface will be 30 mm divided by 2 that is 15 mm so since we are measuring distances from here that will be 150 plus 15 that's equal to 165 mm 165 mm is equal to 0 0.165 meter okay so we have we are using the formula a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 plus a1 plus a2 will be the formula for, we know this formula is the formula for con calculating the y coordinate of the centroid now how much is the area of this rectangle it's 150 into 30 mm that is here plus 150 into 30 that's 150 into 30 okay so once you solve this it comes out equal to zero point it comes out equal to 0 0.120 meter okay so it means where is the centroid as far as the centroid is concerned the centroid is at a distance of in this problem the centroid is at a distance of from here to here from here to here the centroidal distance is the centroid is at a distance of 120 mm okay that is 0 0.120 meter so from here we have obtained the centroid so centroid is here draw an horizontal axis passing through the centroid that's what you call as a neutral axis because neutral axis in this case happens to be one of our centroidal axis Okay, so we have obtained what we call as the neutral axis as well. So the first hand, for, and I will repeat what we have done till now. Till now we have somehow calculated the value of V with the help of shear force diagram. We have calculated the second moment of area using this formula. Okay, second moment of area is in, is in our hand. Now what we have to do, we have to calculate the value of this Q. Now, in order to ca calculate the value of this Q, Okay, we are yet to, we have found this value of the centroid, we have found the neutral axis. Let's first of all find the value of i. In order to find the value of i, what we'll be doing, <coughs> we'll be using the concept of, uh, the concept of uh, composite areas will again be used. Now look here, as far as the, in the formula, tau is equal vq divided by it formula is concerned. In this formula, as far as this I is concerned, this is the second moment of inertia of the area about the neutral axis. Now we have already located the neutral axis. We have to find the moment of inertia about this uh, neutral axis. Now look here, look at the area one. Area one happens to be a 
rectangle first of all find its find its moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis that is find the moment of inertia of this area about its own centroidal axis then make use of the parallel axis theorem find the moment of inertia of the of this rectangle about the neutral axis in the same way find the moment of inertia of this rectangle about its own neutral axis okay then sorry over about its own centroidal axis then use the parallel axis theorem calculate the moment of inertia of this rectangle about the given neutral axis now how we do it the question is how to do it okay the question is first of all look here i is equal we know for a rectangle look at this rectangle first it's equal to it's equal to moment of inertia of this rectangle about its own centroidal axis let this to be the centroid of the rectangle one its moment of inertia its own centroidal axis will be 1 by 12 bd cube now as far as we have to find out the moment of inertia about uh, this axis uh, which is equal to let me rub this which will be equal to the moment the moment of inertia of this rectangle will be 1 by 12 b uh, d cube as far as its uh, b is concerned it's uh, it's it's since we are finding the moment of inertia about uh, about this axis okay so it's b is equal uh, let me do it like this we are have to find for i okay let's take first rectangle this one first calculate its moment of inertia of this rectangle about its own centroid centroid of this rectangle will be at its geometrical center so this will be its centroidal axis and its moment of inertia about its centroidal axis will be 1 by 12 b that is 30 into 150 mm cube that is 1 by 12 bd cube that's what is here okay plus since this is the moment of inertia this is the moment of inertia of this rectangle about its own centroidal axis but we have to find the moment of inertia about the neutral axis now we will use the parallel axis term moment of inertia about this axis this is 112 this much and in order to find the moment of inertia about neutral axis we'll add up its area its area is 30 into 150 that is 0 0.150 meter multiplied by this much multiplied by the distance between the neutral neutral axis and its centroidal axis now the distance is equal to uh, the distance is equal to this <coughs> the, the distance from here to its half will be 75 this distance is that is this distance is the distance from here to here is equal to the distance as we had already calculated is 120 mm and the its centroid is at the geometrical center that distance from here will be 75 mm 150 by 2 therefore the distance between the centroid and the neutral axis will be 120 minus 75 that is what is here 120 mm minus 75 mm this is a and square of the perpendicular distance okay so this formula gives us the moment of inertia this formula gives us the moment this formula gives us the moment of inertia of this rectangle about the neutral axis okay now calculate now let's calculate the moment of inertia of this rectangle about the neutral axis the moment of inertia of this rectangle first will be calculated about its own centroidal axis that's equal to 1 by 12 150 d cube that is 30 cube that is 112 and bd cube we have calculated this is the formula plus area of this that's 150 into 30 mm 150 mm into 30 mm and the square of distance the square of the distance between the square of the distance between the neutral axis and the centroidal axis okay see the distance will be the distance between this neutral axis and the centroidal axis will be equal to the total distance that is 150 mm plus half of this distance that's equal to 165 mm okay the distance from here to the centroid is 65 mm we have to calculate how much is this that is 165 mm that is the distance from here to the centroid of this area is 165 mm the distance from here to here is 120 mm so it will be 165 minus 120 will give us the distance to the centroid of this from the neutral axis that is 165 minus 120 because we have to calculate the moment of inertia about the neutral axis so once you solve this 
the moment of inertia about the neutral axis comes out equal to 27 into 10 raised power minus 6 meter raised power 4. Okay, so this is so this is so we have calculated in this formula. In this formula, we have calculated the value of V, we have calculated the value of I, we have cal we already know the value of T is equal to the thickness of the beam that is 30 mm. Now, the last thing that we have to calculate is the value of this Q. Now, as far as the value of this Q is concerned, look here how the value of Q has been calculated. Now, as far as the Q is concerned, we know, uh, as far as Q is concerned, what is Q? It is the first moment of area. Okay. It is the first moment of area above the neutral axis. Okay. Now, where is our neutral axis? As far as the neutral axis is concerned, this is our neutral axis. This is what I have, I have been trying to you know, highlight in previous lecture as well. That once you are trying to find the value of Q, what is the value of this? This is the first moment of area, which is equal to A prime Y prime. This is what we have, been, what we have done last time. I'm again exaggerating. What is this A prime? A prime is the area above the neutral axis. That is, this is your area above the neutral axis. Okay. This is the total area above neutral axis. So you have to find this area. Okay. Multiplied by the Y coordinate of the centroid of this area. Okay. So this is, I, I'm again highlighting this again and again. I'm exaggerating over it. That as far as this A prime is concerned, A prime is the area above the neutral axis. Above the neutral axis, you have this small t. Okay, this is your A prime. So you have to find the value of this. You have to find the value of this A. How much is the value of this A? That will be your A prime. Multiplied by Y prime. As far as the Y prime in the formula is concerned, Y prime of the formula is it is the it is the it is the Y coordinate of the centroid. Of the of this area now you have the small area a prime small t you have to find its centroid okay the centroid is to be measured from the y neutral axis that is what you call as y prime okay uh, 